This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, May 23. Nearly 200 students at the Lawrence Teague Memorial Primary School will be attending classes at new locations as public health officials try to identify the source of chemical odors affecting operations there. Education Minister Kay McConney made a disclosure today while touring the Spooners Hill School where a fresh round of environmental challenges developed last week. She revealed that officials from the Environmental Protection Department will be taking their investigations into neighboring communities, having found no evidence of contamination on the compound. We have been informed that to date they have found nothing on the premises itself which could be causing the odor and the discomfort of the persons who are here. The Ministry of Health, Environmental Department, they are continuing to investigate the surrounding areas because given that they cannot find a source here on the premises, they are see investigating to see where in the immediate environment this problem may be emanating. In the meantime, Minister McConney said Class 4 students who are preparing for the common entrance exam have already been moved from the contaminated area to another part of the school. She said efforts are underway to facilitate face-to-face -face learning for dozens of students in Classes 1, 2 and 3 who have been displaced by the changes. We are looking for alternative locations for those students and teachers who were in the eastern side, on the eastern block of the facility. And we expect that within a number of days, um, we will be able to relocate the class ones, the class twos, and the class threes to an alternative location, albeit temporarily until we can bring this to some level of resolve. The class fours who are our priority at this time because we know that their exams are coming up very quickly. Some of them are here today. We thank the teachers and the students and the parents who have made this happen. I am told by Principal Clark and his team that much have to, some had to be relocated to different classrooms now on the, on the western side of the campus, which is not as significantly affected. In fact, we are being told that the western side of the campus is not experiencing any discomfort at all. And so we have moved the class four students, especially to the western side of the campus. And we anticipate that tomorrow, I'm told that all of the class fours should now be back together again in face-to-face -face instruction and learning while we seek alternatives for the class ones, twos, and threes who are now online and will be until such time as we can find that permanent location. The demolition of hundreds of illegal structures in the squatting community at Rock Hall St. Philip continued today. Housing Minister Dwight Sutherland was on location along with officials from the National Housing Corporation and consultants working on the project. He insisted that government had to find a solution to the long-standing problem of squatting. We came to office and we started this project to relocate the 106 persons who are below the poverty line. Actually, we are located 150, but 106 thus far have been recognized as being below the poverty line, earning less than $25,000 per year each household. And we have identified sites at Carpenter's Glade, the, the property on which we are standing. This, this was demolished between Saturday and this morning. You can mm -hmm. see the rubble, the remains. This means that we are, we are serious. You, you just interviewed someone, um, what's his name? Kem Sham. Kem Sham, who has gone over to Carpenter's Gate and he's happy. A house 700 square foot, two bedroom house at Carpenter's Gate and we have moved thus far seven persons over to Carpenter's Gate. We have also, through the National Housing Corporation and we have General Manager Mr. Gill here, we have constructed Another 22 houses at Parsland Extension to accommodate those 106 persons, part of the 106 persons below the poverty line, like I said earlier. And we have land not only at Carpenter's Gate, Cliffden. We have a, a project there where we're doing infrastructure to relocate. Nine, nine lots have been allocated at Cliffden. Then we had lots at Leadville. 
and then we just approved a project to engage in infrastructural development over by the prison. Kemsham Wilkinson, who once lived at Rock House in Philip, is satisfied with his new home at Carpenter's Glade. Since December I was in Carpenter Glade, Parish Land St. Philip. How many bedrooms is two, it? Two bedrooms. Very comfortable. Okay. And so how peaceful. How long were you living in this, this, this structure? How long Over you seven here? years. Okay, and tell us how did you come to be here? Well, by coming up here and operating Babcats and thing and solid locations, so other people then I join in. So it's you and your family? Yes, please. And that consists of? Three. Three children? No, I, more children, but only three for now. Okay, okay. <laughs> So what is the arrangement with the house in Parish Land? Is that you, you, you've bought it? You, you? Well, the, the agreement from the national housing is like rent to own. Okay. So once you pay and they complete the mission, then you own it. Prime Minister Mayor Motley has made the Time 100 list of the world's most influential people. Motley features on one of the five world covers and is listed among global leaders that include the Ukraine president and the Russian leader. Editor-in-Chief and Chief Executive Officer of Time, Edward Felsenthal, said Prime Minister Motley was deserving of a spot on the list. He said she was a voice for countries on the front line of climate change as he highlighted her speech at the COP26 climate talks in Glasgow last November. Director General of the World Trail Organization, in her tribute to Prime Minister Mia Motley on time, said she is an embodiment of our conscience, reminding us all to treat our planet and therefore one another with love, dignity and care. The Anglican Church today broke ground on a multi-million dollar renewable energy project which will see the installation of photovoltaic systems on five of its properties. Officials today launched the project on the grounds of the St. Andrew Parish Church. Anglican official Gregory Hinkson outlined the details. Phase one of the project commenced comprising of the installation of approximately 856 kilowatts of PV systems to be located in five properties and we decided initially that we would do that through carport systems as what is going to be happening here with the largest of those installation being right here at the St. Andrew site representing approximately 50 percent of that capacity Anglican Bishop Reverend Michael Maxwell said the project will help the church to satisfy its mandate to protect the environment through the use of green energy. He also said it will help the church to generate much needed income as it continues to serve its communities. This venture on which we embark today is going to be one of our responses as it will after three or so years be one of the major income generators to greatly assist and sustain the level of mission and ministry our church hopes to pursue in the near future. And it will hopefully reduce the financial burden on our individual parishes and enable them to channel their own funds towards localized ministries and community outreach. This project will also see our church becoming an additional provider of renewable energy within our nation and we are trusting that this will contribute substantially, substantially to the overall reduction in the cost of electricity to our people. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, Trinidad and Tobago today became the first Caribbean country to receive the Pfizer pediatric COVID-19 vaccine for children 5 to 11 years old. 
The cargo arrived via a Marijet at 6.44 a.m. on Monday. Minister of Health Terence Diaz Singh and Spain's ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago, Fernando Nogales, were on hand to receive the shipment. The embassy of Spain says Spain is very proud to have been able to make this donation of 43,200 pediatric vaccines to the people of TNT. This donation makes Trinidad and Tobago the first country in the region to receive pediatric vaccines. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.